We're talking about the AFC South. Really interesting division when you consider the top three teams. Let's start with the Colts. Highest win total for the upcoming season at nine over is minus a dollar thirty. And then in terms of the rest of the odds, they are favored to go to the playoffs at minus a buck seventy, and they are your favorites in the division and actually plus money at plus one thirty five. 25 to one to win it all. So Preston, they're going to have a new quarterback this year, much like last year, but not a curveball. They, they're going to know about it. This soft season, Phillip rivers comes in. How are you approaching this uh, win total here? Well, I approached it earlier this summer with an over at eight and a half. I was surprised it was only eight and a half. I'm a buyer of the Colts. I'm the buyer of the additions they've made, including Rivers. Look, it's an upgrade over Jacoby Brissett and Brian Hoyer, who they still won seven games with a year ago. The problem is that now this has moved up to nine. And I know just like the Cowboys earlier, we've done them. It feels like a cop out. But look, the difference between eight and a half and nine, I have them a nine win team over 12 and a half percent of the time this season. So that goes from winning 12 and a half percent of the time at over eight and a half to now it's a push. That's the difference between a profitable bet and one that I think is actually a slight loser now. So at nine, it's a total pass for me. The value is at eight and a half. Let's go to uh, Joe. What do you make of this playoffs? Minus a buck seventy. Remember, extra wild card team this year. In absolutely in. I'm laying the minus one seventy with no problem. I think this team could be this year's version of the San Francisco 49ers from last year. Losing mm-hmm. record, not a whole lot of hype going into the season, and then a major turnaround led largely in part because of the defense. Rivers isn't going to need to be a star. He's just going to need to be smart with the football, which has been a problem in the past. Yeah, and that's where I'm going to go with my sort of play on the Colts. It's going to be under on Rivers' season passing yards, 3,999 and a half. Okay, we'll call it 4,000, right? Look, this is a team that wants to run the ball and also play good defense. You know, they have hats that say run the damn ball. To your point, they traded up to get Jonathan Taylor in the draft and in terms of their deep threats where they can get chunk yards for rivers ty hilton is really the only guy he can never play a full season in terms of health so i think it's just going to be a ball control sort of unit under frank wright who's reunited was the oc with rivers in san diego a few years back with him pushing 40 i'm going to go under 4,000 yards next team in the division the titans win total this year eight and a half slightly favored to go to the postseason at minus 140 and uh, 30 to one to win it all next year. Remember, they did win a playoff game at Foxborough. Uh, Joe, how do you feel about this team? Under. I'm playing the under eight and a half wins. It might not be popular based on what we saw in the postseason last year, but I think these guys are one dimensional and overrated. I don't trust Ryan Tannehill. He's going to need to lean on Derrick Henry, which is huge, but Henry carried the ball 303 times last year. Can we expect the same production? And what happens if Tannehill falls behind in a game like he did in the AFC Championship? Can he lead him back? He was brutal in the second half of that game. Take a look at the schedule as well. They have a seven-game stretch at the end of the season where five games will be on the road. They've got road games at Minnesota, Baltimore, Indianapolis, Green Bay, Buffalo, and Pittsburgh are coming to town this year. I'm not big on the Titans at all. I'm playing under eight and a half. Preston, it's it's an interesting team. We talked about it last year when they were sort of raising eyebrows with the Tannehill replacement, what they were putting up. How do you see them this year? I'm really torn, Doug, to be completely honest. I wanted to look the way Joe's looking. This is a team, he mentioned a lot of the points about the schedule last season versus this year. You look at their defense, which was about middle of the pack in the efficiency metrics, but they were 10th in scoring defense. Now that's because they ran the third fewest plays because of this grind and pound offense that they run. You look at Ryan Tannehill, they had the number one QBR in the NFL. I don't think we can expect that again. It's going to come down to some degree. But on the other side, you're looking at it like he only came in midseason, that back half of the season. It worked. How scary could they be with another offseason and a prep, even as awkward as this offseason has been? A second year with Tannehill in this offense with Derrick Henry relying on that. It's about fair for me. I think they are an eight or nine win team, especially looking at the rest of the division. They have the second easiest schedule in the NFL currently. And I know Joe, he ran off some of those games right now, projected out. They're the second easiest schedule. I have to stay away. No, it's interesting because you guys might remember last year, I wasn't just drinking the Kool-Aid on Tannehill and the Titans. I was chugging it because I was, I noticed (laughs) the difference and they have the big play wide receivers. But with that being said, I kind of agree with Joe in terms of their one dimensional. It is about Derrick Henry. So I'm going to go over a rushing yards prop. Look, it's probably going to be one of the squarest plays on the board, high volume on the over. He's last season's rushing title. Uh, He got that, but the guy is just such a beast. It's what Vrabel wants to do. Run the ball with Henry, play solid defense. And Henry is a beat. He's only missed one game in the last three years. And that was last year, week 16, where they didn't really need it because of week 17, he had over 30 carries, over 200 yards. He's a workhorse, especially in the second half of the season. I think he gets there. 
And now to the Houston Texans with another puzzling trade. DeAndre Hopkins to Arizona in is a new running back in David Johnson. So their win totals at seven and a half and favored to miss the playoffs at minus a buck 70. Look, they've won the division four out of the last five years. You can get three to one odds on that for Bill O'Brien to do it. The only time they did not do it is when Deshaun Watson suffered that knee injury. Joe, we criticize O'Brien a lot. He trades away Hopkins. How are you seeing this number? Yeah, much like Tennessee, I'm going to go the other way and play the under at seven and a half. There's not a lot I'm getting excited about with Houston this year. They were 10 and six last season, but they had a minus seven scoring differential. They were also eight and three in one score games. So those are two indicators that point to some regression. DeAndre Hopkins is gone. That's 30% of uh, Deshaun Watson's targets, receptions, and receiving yards from last year. Now they brought in some other receivers like Brandon Cooks, but those guys are not Hopkins. It's a suspect offensive line that has given up top 10 sacks each of the last three years. And look at the schedule. There's a seven week stretch from week nine through week 15 in which they're going to play five of seven games on the road. They got to hit the road this year to play the chiefs, the Steelers, the bears at soldier in December, Tennessee, Indianapolis, Baltimore, Minnesota, and green Bay are all coming to town. I don't like it at all. I'm going under on Houston here. Yeah, sort of piggybacking that. You mentioned the loss of Hopkins and all that production. I'm going to go under with Deshaun Watson's passing yards prop, 4,146 and a half. Didn't get there last year. I, I just think it's going to be so tough to replace the volume of yards at the receiver position. You mentioned Cooks. They have Will Fuller as well. I love Watson. I think he's a dynamic quarterback. Was actually in the MVP discussion of the year. He hurt his knee, and he means so much to this squad. But I think if you trade for David Johnson, O'Brien's going to want to lean on that running game lean on the defense to a certain extent. I think they surpass expectations a lot, so I'm just going to focus on that prop. And now let's round out the division with the team that's expected to be at the bottom. The Jaguars, four and a half year win total. If you think it's an absolute lock, they don't sniff the postseason. Minus 1,200 is the money line there. And how about 25 to one just to win the division? Huge odds for a guy like Gardner Minshew, who certainly overcame odds and had a little Minshew mania. I'm going to just say over because why not? Five wins just isn't that high, but by no means do I love it. And there's a component, Preston, here with the old tanking allegations, potentially Trevor Lawrence, the Clemson star quarterback there, looming in next year's draft. What do you make of all that? I don't think you can use it to bet this early. I mean, especially for a season win total. If you want to wait and you see the first few weeks and you get the sense that they're going to try to tank and then you bet against them week to week during the season, that's fine. But even if you do that, what did we see with the Dolphins last year? They traded everybody away. They lost by 50 to the Ravens in week one, then by 40 to the Patriots. And then they still won a bunch of games after Fitzpatrick took over, probably more than their fans wanted them to. When it's all said and done, you can't really bank on a tank. I'm staying away from the Jags stuff. Joe, where, what stands out for you this Jags team? Wide receiver DJ Shark going over 1,069 and a half receiving yards. He had a big breakout sophomore season going from 174 receiving yards as a rookie to 1,008 last year. He's going to be the primary target on a team that's going to be throwing for 60 full minutes in all 16 games because they've got a really bad defense, or at least that's one of the key reasons. Jalen Ramsey, A.J. Boye, they're both gone. Calais Campbell's gone. Lots of throwing, lots of garbage time stats. Shark over 1,069 and a half receiving yards. Yeah, I can get behind that one, especially like you said, they expect to be trailing in a lot of games in the second half. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.